Okay, so now we're starting the stream again. I think we found the fix. I am just an idiot and I chose the wrong resolution in my streaming output. I'm sorry, I'm new to this, but it should be yeah, fine from good. now on. You're good, it's all a learning process. I should have I should have walked with you on that. Everybody uh, is an idiot at some player. point. Yeah, you're up again now and you're looking you're looking better here. You know what they say, being bad at something is the first step to being kinda good at it. You may also want to change the scene too. Because you got the, you're not the. Oh, I'm not on the in-game stream. Um, no. Yeah, you're right. Let's do that straight away. Okay, starting with charity, bricks are looking good again. I have to be honest. I'm just straight up rooting for him. I helped him prep for the whole <laughs> thing. I I did some test matches yesterday versus him. I'm just trying to have him get that invite. I think this is his right. first obelisk. I'm not quite. I think no, maybe I think it's his second already this season. So he has been grinding. Oh, charity pot! That's just nasty. But he's running into a spy, and that's going to buy a lot of time. But we do have chaos, so BLS could be an issue. Yep. And that's beefy yeah. back throw again. Man, Rixa. The monster trap back row. It's crazy. <laughs> it's drawing well. Let's put it that way. The whoppers. Hopping off, doing their thing, doing their dance. So what are you trying to do with your Nate Dog here? Probably just trying to set your own back row, trying to survive for a while. If you got the heavy, you rip the heavy. <laughs> yeah. It's the best burn spell in the game. <laughs> And then, um, you know, if you're Nate Dog, you have uh, dust tornadoes, you got MST. If you can just like kind of ride the wave a little bit, maybe stall out just yep. a hair, as long as they at least get something. Just stabilizing is good enough, right? Because the longer the game goes, the more knockout punches Nate Dog has. Mm -hmm. And these spies are going to be an issue. Unless Rixa has tribe or something in hand, these are going to stick around for a while. I'm still waiting for the revolution of people playing the four-star ladybug of doom i've been preaching that for, <laughs> forever that card is so sick it's I'm actually good against spies it's good against warrior it's it's great start the playing four it. Star ladybug of... <laughs> it's so that card is low-key just so funny and just how powerful it can be yeah in certain moments it's, it it, it kind of gives me Ooh. It makes sense because he has to keep that sasuke alive probably not a lot of good follow-up in hand but on the other hand he did not set it when he had bk on the field so it's probably monster still maybe he's bricked. if those are monsters in rixa's hand he might he might have some gas maybe he's bricked on like bls the Borg kind of stuff so he has to keep this around but on the other hand bls would have been live if this call fishes sasuke into grave this Sasuke is a super crazy answer, by the way. Like, <laughs> like, sort of, but you have to connect and that BK is bigger than you. So you both have to connect and have an answer to BK, so it's unlikely to really do anything. The best thing you can hope for is almost a sub Borg drop here, I feel. Just kill one spy, maybe just sit around, wait a bit. Mm -hmm. If he even has the box, I'm actually not sure if he does. He's also been a fan of the blowback dragon. He keeps trying to convince me, but <laughs> I'm, I remain unconvinced. You said this unconvinced. is Quish? <laughs> no, 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 no. Pike Freak is on Quish. Uh, Rixar is Pike on Freak's a warrior-ish deck. Okay, because I, I I remember you said relinquish earlier, and I wasn't sure if that was Rixa or not. Because I know Rixa has, you know, he's yeah. he's played with the relinquish strategy quite a bit. So. Has he? Uh, well, yeah, when he first started, for he definitely was okay. on Relinquish for quite a bit. Um, so I was kind of confused. Like, this is Relinquish? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like crazy. High Creek is on it, and High Creek has been tearing it up in Warwick as well, I think. Oh, my god! I actually, he... I actually checked the win rate for Relinquish decks the other day for Warwick, and this season mm -hmm. has been 69%. And people are still not playing That's it. him. <laughs> mostly. That's it's him. mostly him. And then we have NB getting second place in FLC and people are still not playing it. 
I don't know what it takes. They even won two GGPs last season. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I I think um, I, I talked to Scrub for Life about the deck a little bit earlier, and he said this is it's, it's like one of the more it's like one of the most adaptable decks you can play, especially when it comes to sideboarding. Okay. Uh, for relinquish, just because you don't you don't need the flips per se. You don't really need yep. geckos and stuff. You can take those out and go for a more aggressive strategy more easily than I would say like a turbo kind of like transitioning to like a more aggro strategy. And then you also get hand protection for days. That is true. Huge. But I fear that deciding plan against aggro is much more difficult. Yeah. Because at that point you're kind of playing the weaker deck between a traditional like warrior deck. Yeah. Even turbo itself can probably just side better against Warrior and Urbreco and stuff like that, because the Vangus, they just break your back again as a Manjo player. We've seen that in the first match where um, where Pykrik actually had to out three Vangus in the last game to win the game. Oh my goodness. But he did it. <laughs> yeah, it was really weird. I think he actually sided out most of the relinquished stuff. I think there was one left, like one relinquished, but no ritual uh, spell or anything else. Just mm. because he wasn't going to summon that relinquish ever anyway. Right. Okay. Oh, we see the goblin attack force. Oh, this is interesting. The gaff, dude. Now I'm kind of wondering why he attacked with it. Because he must. Like, either he has back row that protects this. Or he just. I don't know. I think that's the only reason. Maybe he wants to bait him into attacking it so he has something like a. I don't know, a Donny over here, where he can go plus over Spy. But with this deco, you don't have that option. You can only crash. Yeah, that. this makes a possible Donny play not particularly Oh, Donny's awesome. already in the grave. Yeah. So unless he has a second one, it's not the reason. Oh, he's going oh, for the Solemn. solemn. The deco. Sheesh. Chaos is life, though, so bricks are not looking too good. 2,000 HP against a deck that has multiple Chaos monsters, still has Ring active. Goes return active if he does the uh, chaos play too. Yeah, or well, this way. Now imagine like you actually have a lethal line here where you sh shift both an attack. You go with lady attack, banish, and then you return back for lethal. But then the back row has to have be uh, has to be dead. Yeah, you're banking on a lot there. Yeah, yeah. You probably wouldn't want to opt into it even if you have it, especially because the game is already looking good for you. You don't even have to try and play into a mirror force. Rixa is thinking there is the mirror force. Okay, so he did wow, have protection. That's a lot of protection for this gaff. But it's still not going to be able to shift into attack. And next turn, Spike can run it over anyway. Yeah, that's kind of scary. That's that's a lot. That's a yeah. lot for this gaff I'm to live. Pretty sure Ooh. we're going into a game three here. Do you have the pre -med? You can grab the sauce guy. So we know this isn't ring because ring on. Goblin would have been lethal, and I'm pretty sure Nate Dog would find that. Yeah. So what could this be? We still have both Torrent and Mirror Force. And the big question is, like, do you Torrent on this Primo, or do you wait for another summon to come down? But I feel like even the summon coming down on top doesn't really bother you with that much HP. Could be Solemn, could be a Battle Trap. I mean, we're seeing widespread ruin. I mean, could very well be okay. a Saku. Yeah, it could... Very well just be a battle trap. We've seen widespread ruin, that's usually an indicator of at least four battle traps. Or not. It's nothing. Absolutely nothing. So now what I want to see is a snatch to the Borg. That's game. Actually, I think he can even snatch this and just shift it to attack, right? Because the end phase has been done for Rixa, so this yes, you should could be shiftable. Do the, you could shift it if you wanted to. Um, but it's not lethal, so why would you? Maybe if you yeah, have another you're summon. Kind of, you're kind of giving away. Oh, bazoo. Ooh, bazoo. Oh, I like it. If you I've have been, return, you're, you're about to win. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a while, just trying to side it in if you return, because in game one, you're kind of relying on Nox to banish for you, right? 
Mm-hmm. And in game two and three, opponents often side those out. So this way you make it more consistent po- uh, post side. It's, and it's also just a decent beat stick. Like, even if it doesn't do anything, 1600 attack is still okay. It's not great, obviously, but it still does stuff. The interesting part is also he doesn't run over Goblin, but he's big enough. He's at 2500. Yeah, he just walls over it still. And you can still banish another three next turn. Does he have enough material, though? Yes, ab- absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Feel- Epic Phil Young Lady says, Feels on Buyer would have been better here instead of Gaff. Yeah, it would have been safer for sure. You wouldn't have had to expend as many resources as you did to protect this. Goblin has its own advantages. Like It can actually take out two spies if you have enough time. And you can also hit over other Zombiras, which works. And you can crash into Chaos Sorcerers and stuff like that. I, there's, they're just different True. cards for different, different situations. <laughs> I mean, if you know me, you know that I'm actually a giant, uh, a giant fan of Giant Org. Yeah, it's kind of the in-between oh, play man. between yes. Zombira and Goblin, where it's almost as big as Goblin, but it's not rotable. But it's a dark, so you can use it for chaos stuff. Okay, so we're probably just running over Goblin now. Yes, hitting the gap, and you're hitting the set here. So that's hitting 200 damage again, and the set has to be live. What is it? It's a tomato. Tomato. Now that's interesting. Now, what Probably a reaper. I feel like you? a reaper would be the prime example, like why you would play a tomato. But even just a sangan is good enough. What's up, game time, Michigan? Whoa, early morning stream. Yeah, Grumple here, our host. He's, you know, he's got a different time zone than us Americans. Yeah. But the problem is that most of the people playing here are um, are European. I think Nate Dog is the only American. I'm not even sure if he is. Nate Dog repping repping US right here. We had a (laughs) representing. We had a Swiss against Swiss match in losers finals. Rixa is Finnish, and Nate Dog is American, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is the Reapers. This can buy time, but (laughs) with this little HP. You don't even have that much hope in just waiting because that ring is going to get drawn at some point. Gorilla. Gorilla is good. Hits over the Zombira here. Um, Bazoo, also not big enough, actually, right? Like with It two... will be after Yeah, this. okay, with the Zombira and the Grave, it will be. There's also a thing where you can just pump yourself up and wait because that Gorilla has to attack. You don't have to risk the uh, Sakuretsu here. Correct. Mayberry, good morning, Kings, saying, let's go, Nate. He's viewing Banished. That is interesting. Why did he do that? Return doesn't really do anything with Reaper on the field? Unless he has no. You can banish it with a Warrior Lady. Right, right. So he's probably fishing for Battle Trap here just to find it. Okay, he didn't get it. He is is going for Return. Yeah, I think that Warrior Lady play is probably what he wanted. And I, I assume this face down is solemn. I don't think you opt into this if you don't have. Yep. And there it is. Yep. And that's game over. And it is game three. When's <laughs> the next Raw match? I we I don't think we have that info. Uh, we're not go from at Europe staff. And also yeah. the Raw matches aren't really scheduled the same way that Obelisks are. We, they don't get streamed. Correct. Going to game three. Hey, dog. Rick's all. He doesn't even have to have the dog in it. It's still with us. <laughs> it's, a, he's, it's, an, it's the inherent dog. The inherent dog. Like an inherent summon. Do you think he gets a buff once he drops into losers finals? Hey, dog? He totally does. Okay. Makes sense. Also, just saying uh, that Cyber Dragon art that he has is actually inferior to the classic one. What? Yeah. I said it, and it's right. <laughs> That's not... No, no. Yes, I don't yes. think so. The, this this art of Cyber Dragon resonates with the moodier... With the people. You know, 16-year-old, 17-year-old me. So this resonates more with me. This, this is the people's Cyber Dragon right here. It might just be because I never really witnessed this being a thing. 
I've I've only seen the classic one, like the first one. Mm-hmm. I I didn't really play back in the day. I played like in the in the bedroom with my friend at the time. And I think we, yeah. we pulled one Cyber Dragon. That was our biggest thing. That was the biggest card we had. It's just when we played against each other, it was just classic full Sakuretsu, full Mobius decks, Monarch piles, yeah. whatever we had, and we just went at it. The good old days. Yeah, tribute summon, you know, yep. flip summon, all the day. Yep. Hate that Cyber Dragon art. The OG one is where it's at. Yes. This game time, Michigan. And I right. disagree. This is cool. This one's so cool. <laughs> Okay, so at um, least enough. it's better than the art that Rick says uh, is rocking. <laughs> because I don't even know what that is. That even doesn't even look like Yu-Gi-Oh to me anymore. That, that looks like one of those free-to-play think, shooters of the mid two thousands. I think that card came out like a year ago. That is embarrassing. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just a raw pleb trying to make it big. Lol. That return deck is cool to see. Yes, I agree. I need the to give people that love return. Shot. I need to get that another shot as well. That deck is so nice. I... <laughs> is that uh, is that tooth in the booth? Jeff Hardy off the top. What's up, Mayberry? It is. I I haven't slept yet. I I, <laughs> I, think I, took I took a nap earlier, and it totally destroyed my okay. sleep schedule tonight. Tooth, how how late is it for you right now? Or how early is it? It's four a.m. Oh God, four twenty-three a.m. <laughs> Why are you I'm doing chilling. this to yourself? I don't have a choice. I listen to the body, and the body saying, "Stay up, uh, play video games, look okay. at your computer." That is what your body is saying. Okay, <laughs> your body is giving you bad advice. It's like, look at it said, it said two hours ago. Look at the link book. Put plasma zones in your deck. And... Yes, <laughs> plasma zone is busted. I'm. Dude, I don't know what's up with me the past uh, week or so, but you know, I took, I took like a small break off off goats to focus on some uh, real life stuff, and I come back and I'm just thinking like, Plasma Zone's awesome. It is. <laughs> Plasma but, Zone is awesome. <laughs> but all the field spells in the format have the same problem, because they don't have active effects, and they can just get shot away by mirror uh, by MST and stuff like that, and even regular key breaks. I think that's also a big problem why Necro Valley isn't as prevalent against Turbo as it could be because it stops Chaos Summons, right? But it just gets destroyed by anything. Right. I. It kind of does have a an issue, like a similar issue to something like a Royal Oppression does in this format. You know, where, yeah, it, does, it takes the time to set up, which it just inherently makes the card uh, really hard to sell. <laughs> but... You know, if it being searchable by terraforming, you know, that's kind of cool, right? Thins the deck out. So gets you where you want to be. The other day I built a Gravekeeper Monarch deck with one of my friends from my uh, from my locals. And mm. I think that's actually pretty funny. Because Gravekeepers have their own revival spell, if you don't know, which d yeah, ignores right the Necrovelly effect. And they have their own uh, monarch kind of it's kind of sort the of trees. bad but also good. The chief, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I, it's funny because I literally thought about that, uh, a little bit ago too. I, I think that deck is 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 cool in concept. I think it might be something to kind of explore in the future because a lot of people are just like, oh yeah, Gravekeeper Warrior is the only way you could actually play that deck, and even then it's like, and even then it's like, oh, even then it's not great. Cool. So I think having the ability to just recur as often as Gravekeepers possibly can. What this start. is an insane opening. But going um, back to Keepers real quick, I think the reason why people really like Warriors with them is because you're pretty much forced to play Solomus to keep your Necro Valley alive, so you might as well just go into the Warrior Trap lineup. Right. Right. But it doesn't mean that it's the only option. Also interesting that Rixa just opens with a straight-up Goblin attack, force and attack. <laughs> it also you gotta didn't work set that much. This is just gotta, nasty. Oh my god. You gotta work later today, Tooth? No, I do not. I take care of all my work stuff Monday through Thursday. 
What are the odds that Archfiends can make a decent impact? Terra King is pretty legit. Zero Ask percent. Alephia. Zero Ask Alephia percent. About Archfiend. Alephia Ask topped Alephia in about spite Archfiend. of the deck. <laughs> <laughs> That's just kind of the big summary of Alephia. He just does well in spite of the decks he chooses. Alephia is him. Yeah. Alephia yeah, he's just the protagonist. Him. So, what do you do if you're Rixaw in this position? Pray. Like, this is this is not nice. At least Nate Dog kind of stops himself from playing more spells. So, you can't get duoed soon, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> okay, but this doesn't look like a big push. Why does he even summon Breaker here? He must have an out to Goblin. Maybe it's like a knock set and just smashing something like that. Okay, getting call out. That's good. Oh, it, well, just if it was going to be a big push, the spy would have. Why he is, just done double why is he attack. swinging in with the spy, though? But like, he's never hitting over the goblin, right? Okay, that's a reaper. That buys Maybe a lot he's of got time. a. Devil rush recklessly back there. Oh, that would be nasty. I played that card once in War League this season. I didn't even draw it, and people still memed me for using it. <laughs> I don't know. I I tested Rush Reckless here a little bit. You know, it's it's kind of interesting, especially if you play like a decree strategy and you can't really afford to play um, the Sakus and stuff, and you still need something during that battle phase. It's interesting. It's so, interesting. I mean, what you're really fishing for is the interaction between bk and spy where you can attack a face down monster and if it's spy you can like they have to reveal it first and then you can use rush recklessly to just punch over it and negate the effect that's the dream but even if that doesn't right. work it's still a decent battle trap and it also lets bk run over chaos sorcerer for example it's just post side not that likely right. but again you can like you can use after the window where they can use sakuretsu so it's not like you're going minus I think Rush Rex yeah, can Rush be used, it's just not very strong. It's just like a tech card you can use every now and then. It's also, yeah. It also makes Donnie that much better. <laughs> like Imagine if you're in the mirror match in the, as, as a warrior, you have Donnie on the field, opponents summon BK, attack your um, your Donnie and you just have Rush recklessly <laughs> and they go minus. <laughs> Rush recklessly is the goo, says Ghost Rider. If it Ghost Rider says something about a card being the goo, I gotta trust him on it. It is goo. The goo but, is also great. What's also interesting about the Rush Recklessly here is that it uniquely would kill the Spirit Reaper, which is funny. True. <laughs> can you use it on other monsters or can you just use it on your own? I think I think it's target one monster on okay. the field. Right? That's interesting. Let me double check. It's also yeah, kind of the target, same. Just target a monster on the field. It's kind of also the same discussion that you have when you want to use Reaper in Turbo, because on one hand you want to be able to bait mind cons by just setting it and not get it killed, but then they can also just use mind con with phase of Reaper to kill it. So it kind of goes both ways again. Right. Okay, going off to the face down, that's the third spy. <laughs> <laughs> so do you swing? If you are Rixa here, do you swing? Um I don't think so. This goblin is this goblin is one of your few threads of defense here. There's the also Reaper. the threat that maybe by not swinging you kind of open up a place where they the opponent can crash the light into it and then have chaos active because so far he only has darks. Right. But that's kind of convoluted. Brant T says, that's the Grumple Fairy? There's no fairy it, on the field, but we will be seeing a fairy deck later today because Pike Freak is on it. I think he's referring to you as the fairy duelist. Oh, if, right. Yeah. That, that, that's me. <laughs> yeah, it's Grumple. One of the... Uh... You could, you could, would you, would you call yourself a pioneer of the fairy strategy? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, pioneer of the fairy strategy. Not quite. I, the I don't know if that was a term you. Not quite the inventor. That title goes to Campos. 
Yeah, that's, that's why I was wondering if it was a turn that you... Oh my goodness, this is going to be a lot. I'm pretty sure he has Solemn as well because he's playing into Mirror Force as if it doesn't exist, so it probably doesn't. Well, that is big. Yeah, this doesn't look great for Rick, so... Hmm. It's getting hit by all these weenies. Your Reaper's gone now. Your Goblin's gone. This sucks. <laughs> this sucks. Yeah. Really you don't have you don't have chaos live. We're going with Sasuke. And we're okay. not attacking. You can't pump the bazoo again, so That's true. But he probably has return. Wait, what? Why oh, are we doing this? Quick. Okay, that um <clears throat> we didn't see that. I mean, we knew. Nobody saw that. Know. Nobody saw that. <laughs> yeah. We, we, I think we all knew that there was, <laughs> you know. That's unfortunate. And sometimes people say, like, this just doesn't play, it doesn't, doesn't happen offline, but the amount of times I've dropped cards <sighs> out of my hand just on accident, you wouldn't believe. Oh, I hate that. I'm, I'm a... I'm a notorious. I have a really bad thing of hand shuffling. That's I well, do it. I barely often. do that just because I'm not good at shuffling at all. Like I'm still fairly like, new to IIL, Yu-Gi-Oh. Right. I I just do so much out of habit, and I know it's annoying for my opponent. I feel really bad. Isn't that the but, point? No, I just do it out of habit. I just saw people do it. I was like, oh, this feels kind of nice to do because I like the sound it makes. Okay. <laughs> and I like the. Oh. Yeah, I, I had that yesterday. I was uh, talking on Discord with Murphy, and he just kept shuffling his cards for some reason, and it was really annoying. So shout out to Murphy. You're, <laughs> I don't know, weird. On a bottomless to BK. You did snipe the Solemn. That's good. That's a bottomless, but this probably isn't a big deal anyway because return has to be there somehow. I feel Gotta like return. I feel like with Bazoo just banishing everything from your grave, you're pretty much set. And worst case scenario, like yeah, yeah that is the return. I'm kind of I'm curious say, why he uses you had it now. To to anyways. Why does he use it now? Oh, because he he needs to punch over. He needs to punch over, and that's game over right? because there's a solemn. Yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll that was on. to be expected. So this should mean. Oh, he's confident. <laughs> he will be back. <laughs> he will be back. So this, going on the Grands winner side. This means Rixa is facing Pike Freak. Yep, so we're yep. seeing Warrior against Manju Ritual. And I'm still on the crusade of trying to get people to recognize it as a fairy deck, especially the Inbi version. Like that version plays seven fairies, and we're not calling it a fairy deck. What is going on? <laughs> Brant, speaking of fairies, Brant says, fairies for life. Absolutely. Today, uh, today at Locals is going to be nice. Who is the other commentator? It's me, Bluetooth. So who said that? Brant. Oh, okay. B-R-A-N-D-T. I don't know who that is. I was thinking it might have been somebody from my Locals. <laughs> Maybe I should Maybe he's the fairy duelist going to Locals. Maybe he's a fairy duelist going to Locals. Good luck if you are... I've seen that the other time I went to locals where a player there um, played my Mudora fairy list against me and just clapped me away. Yes. On one hand, you love to see people trying the deck. On the other hand, you just hate to lose against it. <laughs> <laughs> Every single time I would lose against the Borg, I'm just really mad because like, that's my guy. I don't get to do that. <laughs> this is my thing. This is my thing. <laughs> Okay, uh, Pike Freak says ready in three minutes. We will, I guess, waste some time until then. Um, yeah. Murphy um, says, ha ha ha, shuffling cards go. Burr. Yeah. Appreciate you guys coming out and watching. I know the, the, Euro, the Euro players are eating really good today. I know we don't really get to stream very often on uh, time zones that are euro friendly so shout out people get to the there. european duelists 
Ghost Rider says, I'm also a hand shuffling addict IRL. It's it feels good. It feels good. But sometimes, you know, I got I got clumsy hands sometimes. Sometimes the card just slips out when I shuffle my hand. Yeah. And then it's like, oh my God, I look like such an idiot right now. Because if it falls to the ground now, if, now it looks like I'm about to cheat. Like I'm about to just band and keep and swap cards real quick. And if it falls and if it hits the table, oh, you just saw what I just got in my hand. <laughs> it's like such a it's not a fun scenario to be in. <laughs> Game time Michigan, shout out, shout out DJ. We don't get fairies at our locals. Would be cool to see it though one day. Well, bring it yourself. That's the solution every single time. If you need a list, hit me I think up. he, I think he organizes it. He's ah, okay. the, yeah, he he runs the shop at game time. Okay. You should start doing bounties. You're like, I'll I'll <laughs> I'll give you ten bucks if you play fairies at locals. <laughs> Okay. I love girls. I don't think I have the it. time to resleeve today, but I'll do it next time. <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> so how often do you actually play locals? I don't any I can't anymore. My oh. locals is gone. That been gone for sucks. a couple months now. Hmm. Well, the whole shop just shut down. The the person running it, hmm. shout out, Bento Box. Um, they they were just so done with running the store. They're like, yeah, we're I'm just gonna shut it down. Uh. Um, so every it's, yeah, like they they took they took everything off. That's unfortunate. I also have to travel quite far because my city doesn't have any Yu Gi Oh shops. Dang. Not a single, Not a like single literally one. nothing? Literally nothing. Wow. So I kind of, like when I go to locals, I, I just travel like two hours to get there, <laughs> which is a bit ridiculous, but also kind of fun. I've done that before. Two yeah. hours for our locals. I have done that before. And then you show it's... up, you completely brick, and your day is ruined. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't have to go O2 drop and then draw to the drive home. <laughs> That's the worst feeling ever. Yeah. At least you still get to hang out with the people, which is like the main benefit yeah. of locals, right? Mm hmm. You can say what's up, yeah. you know? Good locals are hard to come by these days. Yeah. Well, especially when it comes to retro stuff i think um there's sometimes it's hard to get a retro scene going irl i think is the main thing like maybe not a, maybe it it depends on the format like i know edison locals pop up pretty often right now um but like a goat local or like a tangu local those are hard to come by i think it, the big takeaway is always do it yourself um, don't wait for a local to pop up. Just contact the store, ask them if you can try and host something and do it. Yeah. Just doing it is the best way to get something to happen. And if they say no, then they say no. Hey, at, yeah, then, then ask another shop or ask again uh, later. You know, treat it like a job application. Just ask again later. <laughs> yeah. I live in Innsbruck. There's not even locals here. Very sad. I'm sorry to hear about that, DJ. Ghost um, says, I travel 10 minutes to get the locals. <laughs> so I don't know how close Innsbruck yeah. is to Munich, but I know they have really big locals there. If you're interested, you can hit me up. I can give you uh, contacts. Um, I, I just know that Innsbruck is in Austria. I just don't know if it's close to the border at all or not. Mm. Zogler, shout out. Greetings. Losers finals, right? Nate Whitting. For the winner, yes, we are about to get going here between Rixa and Pike Freak. And is he losers. thinking on? Is he thinking on if he's going first or second? Did it just what? <laughs> or am I just stuck here? Am I stuck? Let me, let me hop in. Okay. They started. Yeah, they, oh, okay. they're in. They're in. Okay, let's refresh real quick. 
<laughs> Bricks uh, uh, using Rota. Yeah, but I didn't know they even started. I I didn't get a. I didn't. They didn't send a message or not anything. Yeah, Dueling Book has been awful for me the last couple of days. Just very laggy and. I don't know. Miserable. Yeah. It's been miserable for like two weeks. Yes. I don't know what's going on with the servers. But it's been like, really bad for me this week. Just last Friday, dude. Last Friday we get into round one. It round one doesn't even finish. And DB literally goes offline for over an hour. I was literally going to just like try to cancel it, the tournament. The until Friday one. Like, I, yeah, the Friday one. Oh, okay. Until like I said it, oh yeah, I'm gonna cancel it. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. And then five minutes later, he goes back home. He's like, uh, who's around? <laughs> Who wants to get an invite? To Gold Grinders. GGI Saturday. Oh, right. I, I still have to sign up for that. Yeah. If you have an invite tomorrow, uh, well, I guess today. Really? Uh, today? Really today. In a couple hours. The uh, Well, no, I mean, today in a couple hours is the last Friday Oh, okay. I thought you meant to like, get the invite. I thought you meant the submission to take part because mm -mm, then tomorrow. I'd be in trouble. I have that's some tomorrow. ideas, which I, I want to spoil give. Uh, I want to give players the night to figure out their deck, especially if a, if new players get the invite, give them some time to think about it. Okay, so is Manju going to pop up on this Mystic Swordsman level yeah, two through. here? This is game one, so there are probably no Sakus and Pike Creek stacks, so this Sasuke is an issue for now. However, Pike Creek has a lot of cards. There's one Quish, I don't know anything <laughs> mega else. Up. Mega up. Yeah. Manju's just so nice because it it like always pluses, it doesn't it doesn't wait to resolve anything, it just hits the field and instantly does its thing. And this is also great for Pike Creek. This is a bait set because you know nice knock aesthetic hit. anyway. Yeah, and nice bluff right there. Ghost Rider says, I'm getting my invite with Pac-Man today. Please. Uh, please don't. Please play Pac-Man. That's so <laughs> annoying. Play Pac -Man. That's it's so not even funny. a good deck, it's just annoying. Hey man, that, that <sighs> chaos Pac-Man. Man, that, that might cook. I think a couple of weeks back. Giomba Man topped a Patreon with not exactly Pac Man, but I think it's called Master Lock. Master Lock? Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's just Him Nightmare and, um, Wheel and Golem Sentry, and you wait. It, it was Giomba Man, and then before that, uh, at GFC, it was. What's his name? Shib I think it's Shibu? Never heard uh, of him. He's an Italian player. He's friends with. um, I want to say he's friends with uh, Purple Drunk and Ludo. Okay. Um, He topped. GF, the last GFC with Master Lock as well. That deck is, it, from what I saw, it's like the most annoying thing. And it, it's also extremely effective at what it does. So Rixa is using the drawing well combo. Charity into pot, always nice. Still, in terms of card advantage, it's just even. Well, I guess Pike Creek has a quish in hand, which doesn't really do anything. And this Donny could go plus if it connects. Well, I think he said there's not sure. a good chance he might not have Saku's main. So it had, if he had the Mirror Force, he would have blocked I think, that a little bit ago. I think he might be thinking about a Phoenix here. I'm not sure if he has Phoenix or Regeki Breaks, but a Phoenix doesn't really solve the problem here, right? So you're kind of considering it. That would be my right. read. He takes it. Well, you do have the hand protection with the quish. Let's see if it let's well, see if it matters here. It's not really hand protection if it's random. Oh, it's a sock. And that was life as well. That is a oh That is massive. You don't want to see that. Yeah, maybe not hand protection is the best word. Maybe just like hand clutter. Yeah. Hand clutter. There you go. I mean, it does kind of protect you anyway, but the randomness makes it unreliable. It's more of disc to me. It's more discard fodder than hand protection. Hold prior. Herplo Drunko. Yeah, but he always switches his name up on <laughs> dueling book. 
Purple Drunko is a pretty good name though. <laughs> that's the name he went with at GFC. He does he switches he switches accounts a lot. Hand fodder. That's a good one, Nate. So you have the wind blast. So my read was correct. I'm a genius. <laughs> Let him know. Yeah. This is a very tough spot for Pike Freak, by the way. This is not pretty. So, so the reason I say that is because uh, in the first match, I had a hard read on Pike Freak having a set of illusion ritual and it turned out to be Mirror Force. So <laughs> it didn't really work out. <laughs> The quish is gone. There's a tribe. That's potentially good. Maybe even a solemn target. No negate. That's interesting. No negate. Okay. Oh. Oh. He didn't. He didn't delay prior. So it gets hit with uh, while getting discarded. Probably still the right call because. Getting double warrior for that one Kaiku is still really good, especially with Donnie being around. Yeah, I mean, I think Rick's I would have still ripped that. Oh, okay, Honestly, this has to walk. Though. This, this is... has to walk. That's this, this is your last chance. <laughs> I, I just have to hope that Rick's has no snatch. I mean, he could have anything. He could have ring this Saku already, so it could be torrent. Honestly, him asking for private might even be a torrent. <laughs> it could I mean the only thing we know is that he didn't negate this which is interesting because I feel like if you have Sodom and you don't have Snatch then you have to Sodom here but maybe he does have Snatch yeah I mean a Snatch in a normal is just okay. it's over he does Here's have a ring that's good any normal summon does it now We don't know what this phase stone is, but it's game one, so it's kind of likely to be something like shoot, which is just dead and stays around for a while. Correct. And we don't know what this phase stone is. I still think it's likely to be a solemn. It is it's call. call. My reads are amazing today. We're going for Donny, I assume. Tribe. Tribe. Probably just on the chance that he has goats. Okay, he's checking trade. Oh. Looks like he's just scouting for game two now. Yep. And here we go. Ricks are up a game. I think this is tough for Pike Freak. But it's the second warrior for him today. So he beat him in the first match. Mm. The interesting part will be how many Bangus does Ricks have? Does he have three the same way that Major Sam did? But it wasn't enough for Major Sam. So what do you do? And does Pike Freak reduce his <laughs> ritual package again? I might have to. I feel like you might have to and just focus on just getting that ground game just getting those trades like no shenanigans no funny business just just get those trades <laughs> no sneaky no sneaky stuff um team od anthony anthony alvarado says i will be gatekeeping 1 p.m Decla he's declaring it <laughs> thank you thank you and <laughs> i will but... be gatekeeping Please gatekeep it and then don't sign up. I want my invite. <laughs> A declaration of gatekeep. The other, so funny. The other day I, I checked the leaderboards because with my last FLC thing, I think for the first time ever I, I got into top 10 there and I just compared the win rates there and Anthony is just, he's just the gold standard for gold. It's amazing. The amount of games he plays and the win rate he gets consistently on it, it's next to nobody. Like honestly, looking at that, there's nobody else who's considered the goat of goat than Elvarado. I know there's like people like Lucas who I think have technically more tops and stuff like that, but if you just look at the numbers, it has to be end. Alvarado is the definition of a grinder. Like, um, you know, not taking anything yeah. away from. Lucas, but Lucas does not grind as much as, as uh, Alvarado does. Who but plays his win rate is better too. Often. Who's Alvarado's? He wins. He still wins a higher percentage 
of his matches oh, than yeah. Bukas does. So the grinding part isn't what makes him better. Like maybe he just gets better by grinding a lot, you know, but it's not like he farmed a lot of Edo by just playing a lot. He just wins way more than he loses. <laughs> Chat on left, frozen. Oh, um, never mind. My mobile acting up, probably. I think, um, so this is like a common issue with the Streamlabs chat. It, uh, it, it lags a little bit for their YouTube streams. Okay, so nothing I, I can that, do to fix it? it no, because that happens on my stream. That happens on JDZ's stream. It, it, it'll freeze up for a little bit and then it'll go, uh, it'll just go back up. It'll sync up. Poop Geek Net. I was like two minutes behind LMAO. Shout out Zogler. Zogler. <laughs> Shout out. Murphy. Remember that combo where I said Ant is the goat? Inky face. Wait, who said that? Murphy. Oh, okay. Maybe. Probably. I mean, I pretty much just said the same thing, so why am I arguing? <laughs> I don't know. I just like arguing. Yeah, just tell me which position I'm taking. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good start. So we have Zogla in chat here right now, right? Yes. Okay, so, Zog. okay Zogla, you got top oh, four my. in FLC with your reasoning gate, right? So please tell me, does the inclusion of three cranes change the game plan for RGT? Significantly, like not just minor stuff. Dude, just straight up ripping that BLS is insane. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about tilting. Well, Talk about at this point, you're only scouting your opponent's hiding choices for game three, right? <laughs> so, we'll see. I mean, it's not too much knowledge. The upstart and the duo. It's we'll see what else comes up. Interesting that he kept the bottomless. I don't really see good monsters on Pykrik's side to hit this with. I guess Chaos Sorks and Zombira are the best ones. Wow, that heavy connected. Oh, and wow. it was a pro set heavy too. Oh, oh okay, never mind. Now goodness. you're playing for the win. That is not okay. What's the follow-up? Warrior Lady. It's a spy. It's spy. So Awkward. Spy buys time, but... I think Rixa should be better off with a, a low card count than Pike Creek is. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just how, what Warrior does. That heavy going plus is so important, especially with the duo behind it. That was crazy. Like, it's also very, let's say, brave to just put these two there and accept mm -hmm. the heavy if it comes. The set. I would honestly Herbie assume says. that this is just a moth. Yeah, and now... Oh my goodness, what a read. <laughs> well, it's because he doesn't really have many flips and two spies are out. It's more likely to be moth than anything okay, else. Fair. Um, fair, fair, fair. There, probably so you don't Murphy really says... have good stuff, because if you want duo, then your opponent can just set his hand, and now you can tell me about Murphy, because I've been teasing him with that Zogla stuff. There is a difference playing Cannon Soldier... Or going for cranes instead. <laughs> what do you mean by this? Okay, so um, the last couple of days we've had discussions. Well, it's not really a discussion. It's mainly just me being an asshole. Um, so we were talking about the Zogla list because it includes three cranes. Pretty much what I said was that the Zogla list doesn't really look that different from the other REG lists we've seen so far. Like It doesn't look like an innovation to me. And Murphy is way deeper into RGT theory than I am and he pretty much disagreed and I just I'm just making up reasons that he's wrong like I'm, I'm not actually <laughs> arguing with him I'm just making stuff up so that's why the the shout out to Zogla was kind of just meant to tease him a bit three okay. cranes change the play style oh there's tribe that's good we know Pike Creek is on a heavy which doesn't do anything right now so this is a big hit it even goes plus well, I guess kind of sort of because Spy itself went plus, so I guess it's just even now. It's 3-1 though. It's a two-turn clock after this turn, obviously. 
at Bluetooth. How did your FLC go? I lost versus your insane return strategy game one. Um, I, I, I finished, I went 2-2 two, two drop. Um, the, it was cool. Like, I didn't really, I didn't really test it. Um, but it just, I mean, it was just like turbo with, a with some different stuff going on in the side and the main had like return and triple deco. But I feel like it was cool. It was fun. Um, just wish I had more time to refine that strategy or get more comfortable with it. Should have played Cyber Joe. Cyber Joe. That would have been dope. <laughs> Cyber Joe would have been awesome. Okay, so. He tossed the heavy storm with charity, so we don't have any info anymore. But the two Zombiros are out already. That's good. Oh, That's a plus. Just it. I'm not sh actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Torrent is just fine because that way you save 100 HP. Yeah. Support. Ooh. That is. That's full charity for Pike Creek now. And Huge. he's still kind of struggling. His HP is way too low already. Ring is still in the game, but yeah. Okay. What are we waiting for? Am I just stuck again? Um, he just drew two, he just summoned Manju. Okay, I, I just keep lagging a bit, I guess. Yeah, I'm on the Manju now. So we're going into Quish again. So we at least have one Quish left in Pi Creek stack. 1400 isn't that big of a deal. One set, that probably one just pass. playing around Dust Shoot. Especially with Heavy out. This tornado. Probably on a new one. And it's a Snatch. Oh! So... Golly. I, I actually really, really like the bait sets with Snatch because the punishes to Snatch being set is kind of the same as just playing it because the right. Dust Tornadoes and MST still hit it anyway. So just because the of backfire Sukiyomi. here, it would have still backfired the other way. Okay, so Ring considering, considering the stuff that we've seen last match from Pike Creek, I think this ring play is wrong because I don't think there's another ring push to deck. You don't keep plussing. And here's the punish. Oh, and there's... Yeah. But it's not it's quite over. 100. We know that the last card in Pike Creek's hand is a ring push and now it's Sook as well. Depends on what the face down is and what rigs the top decks. Snatch for game. Is it Snatch? <laughs> is it Snatch? That. <sighs> <Ooh>. Sir, <laughs> sir, I am stuck again. Ah, that's annoying. I'll refresh. Um, is the game over, or did he banish the serp? Actually, I guess it's over anyway because then so does it right. Yeah, it went. It went to game three. He, he yeah. fight three normal summon the serp and swung with BLS. Okay. Yeah, I'm back in. I'm inciting. So Rick's are starting now. Probably just hoping that Pike Creek doesn't draw full Trinity again. <laughs> but to be fair, Rick's are start was really strong as well. The heavy storm into duel. At that point, I thought the game is over. And Zogler's dropping some good RGT knowledge here. What is he saying? Um. It's not that different, IMO, not much innovation. I just feel without the cannon and the tune table deck is more stable. Cannon engine never worked for me well. Not saying it's not good, just never worked for me. And three carrying three sork was very comfy. Yep. Do you know what's a good side deck card? Jogan. Cannon soldier. Oh, okay. Just, just not even the, this not not tune cannon soldier. Just, just, just a plain Jane cannon soldier. Splevin got me on that. Especially for locals, it's really strong because when you go overtime, you just sight that one in. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're playing control, you just play some goat. You just flip yeah. goats, and then you just burn for twenty five. <laughs> I'm like, wondering cool. if there's a way to make a sort of machine beat down control thing with limited removal work with that way because it's kind of the combination piece right 
that does also let you do the fusilier metamorphosis uh yeah meta plays yeah but the fusilier doesn't really do much with the machine part because when it hits the field it's usually at one four and it's just not great like it's only really good if you want to meta it into a dragoon or i guess last warrior you can do uh i mean you have call you have pre-mat you have silk yeah it can it can work but why would you want to play it if you can just play blowback dragon and jinzo instead Two, we can't leak the can tech the canon technology has been to the public ever since i Top that PWCQ with control. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the technology's been out. Cannon Soldier <laughs> is fun. It also just offers game shots that are very unexpected because, especially with your control, I feel like a lot of the times once BLS and Ring are out, you kind of don't have options to do damage anymore. And if the game is over, like if the game isn't over after you've used both of them, and they have a spy and you just can't make progress anymore, then Cannon Soldier is just a good way to play around that. Mm -hmm. Just in general. Also, in the last couple of months, we had more Solemns in Turbo, right? So Burn Cards got a little better against that. I was considering playing Ceasefire for a while, but that card just doesn't do enough. Like, just trying to prey on people Soloming themselves to almost death isn't enough to make the card good. And in itself, it's just not good enough. I agree. But I don't know. Maybe one something or... like a random just desert against control is worth it. One or two mystic walks or locals with time rules. Two or three. <laughs> is it you should be two minimum. Uh, three if you really are, if you're playing like a grindy deck. For sure. I think uh, if you're going with time rules and you're playing a, a grindy deck like a control strategy consider minimum two or three i think there's also the strategy where you play self-destruct button and just cause draws over and over again until it's over time and then you just side <laughs> into your side package of just burn cards and vox and you win by default <laughs> so, i don't know how consistent bro. that is but it exists and it's very disgusting please don't play it doing that at our locals is should be illegal Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to, to sp- I'm going to air some gossip here but we had somebody play um, Empty Jar at our locals the other month and that didn't go over well oh. if you're playing Empty Jar library against people then why are you doing that Empty Jar is a hard deck too like, that's, that's not, not the deck point. that you can just pick up the point isn't that it's not skillful. The point is that there's no interaction. Like you're just not playing with your opponent. You're playing by yourself. And that's my problem with it. Correct. It's the same that I have with library. Just don't play. The decks aren't even that good. What do you think about a uh, cat? Um, cat kind of falls into a similar stuff. Uh, it's the same thing, but not ex- as extreme, right? It's like reasoning gate. It's I think I even prefer it over reasoning gate. I think reasoning gate is even worse than cat. But I think that cat is actually really strong. I think it's severely underplayed and yeah i'm kind of happy that it's not that popular because it's not that nice to play against but on the other hand it would open up turbo a bit more because then they have to side for more otk behavior Let's put it that right way. yeah there's not a whole lot of people threatening otk strategies yep. right now especially like uh like Reason Gate isn't seeing like a, a ton of play. We might see a bit more, more of Reason Gate now that Zogla topped with it. But the problem True. with Reason Gate is that the ceiling is very, very close because the second that it gets kind of popular, people will side and spell Kansas and Jaugens, and those are just cards that ruin the entire deck. Yeah, it straight up makes it un- unwinnable unless you can find an app for it. There are side That's cards that just block RGT from ever being meta defi- defining, but it's. Like, it's kind of good to have it around to just keep Turbo in check and keep Turbo spread out. But that's all that RGT is good for. In my opinion. Just, just I'm not saying that the deck is bad. I'm, I'm saying that the uh, that I don't like playing against it. So it's kind of a necessary evil to me. Kind of this, I like, will burn. say, at least, with, at least with Kat, you can you have kind of more versatile options for your sideboard. Like, uh... And... Cat decks themselves are versatile as well. Like you can have the pure cat OTK, even the beatdown earth aggro variant. There's the burn variant. There's the control variant. There's so much stuff you can do with it. 
I'm I'm always gonna say that I'm a big fan of. Well, you know, I I love the Earth the Earth one, the Earth variant, and then I I also am huge. I'm so huge on the Nano Worm deck. I actually that think that the cat is... control deck is really good too, especially the combination with creature swap is so nice. It's all that deck is almost there. I've I've tried it for so long, hmm. just trying to refine it and trying to get better with it during in like slippers and stuff. It's almost there, but then you it doesn't have the oomph. it doesn't have like the bombs that control really needs. Is cat not enough for that? Need. Not for what you're trying to do with the deck. Like, if uh, unless you're trying to do like a last will huge push kind of thing, mm -hmm. it because a lot of times you're you're making like without the will cats ability to be like a huge bomb card, or without like Ojama trios, its ability to be a huge bomb kind of diminishes, and then it becomes more like you're an extender. Yeah, that gets you. To where you want to be but doesn't doesn't it, it's like I think it's like almost lethal versus lethal you know almost but not close enough i don't know where i've seen that but i've seen somebody play cat as a chaos enabler with death koala and one of the ojamas because then you can use cat to just search for chaos materials straight away and you can drop it that is interesting but i don't think it's very good also i've just had three turns happen at the same time because Dueling book is being weird, and now the game's just catching up to what happened. Okay, so I'm seeing a Manju attacking a Reaper. Yes, that's where we're at right now. Great. I see Rix are thinking. I feel like if you have a Sakuretsu so or something, you have to use it here. He might be thinking on Ring. Ring is interesting. Kind of depends on what you think your next top deck is going to be. Can you hit over this Manju or not? Because ideally you would want the ring on a Chaos Monster, but even if you take this hit, you can't like, even do that anymore. Yeah, he has it. There's the ring. Yeah, he had to do it. Let's see what he draws. Kaiko would be pretty nasty now. We're setting. Okay. Wow. I don't okay. see that yet. Hmm. And here comes a Sork. Uh, probably banishing the, Sork, uh, the Reaper for now. Yeah. Yeah. Safe. Just keep it safe. Get that. Get that immediate value. So what do we think the set for Rixar is? Is it another Reaper or is it the Moth? Um, could be, could be Moth. I, I don't think we've seen Devil Reaper from come from Rixa. True, could even be the Tomato. We've seen that in the first match that Rixa played. Oh, it's oh, a level two. Too. It's nothing. Yeah, this isn't looking good for Rixa. This looks like he's is Ring close. live for Pike? Yes, it is. Looks like he's pretty Ring close to getting dropped out of the tournament. He's setting again. Could be Warrior Lady. Actually, Warrior Lady is out. It can't be. Could be Ring again. But this looks over. Just attack with Sorcerer and trying to push lethal. It's And that's yep. it. That is game over. That means Jeez. Rick is eliminated and Pike Creek made it through losers finals we're getting return against quish and honestly that's pretty much the best <laughs> what <outcome>. a grand <laughs> that's a crazy grand we're getting good grants lately flc was mm -hmm. burn against quish this is quish against return Quish is Quish is all over right now i'm telling you the deck is really good you ain't got to tell me twice. Oh, poor, poor Rixa saying, God fuck. Yeah.
going zero two is kind of rough, especially if you you're so close to getting an invite and then it just all crumbles. It really sucks. But he will get there. I'm pretty sure. He's he's right there. Just needs a good bracket. Just needs a good bracket and some good hands. The bracket was good enough for him, I think. Especially against he just this, needs the good hands. Especially against this Quish stuff, I feel like Warrior probably beats Quish most of the time. Probably like 60-40. But it wasn't enough. And Quish beat two Warriors today, so I'm not even sure if that's correct. We gotta run the numbers. <laughs> we can check the right, warding statistics the... real quick. Yeah. Check the war because right now if we're going off the statistics of this then it's it's a hundred oh. Yeah, two matches are very, very important. <laughs> pretty big yeah, pretty big pool here. So let's um, see. Matchup matrix. So Pike Creek is going to take five minutes. Okay. Linguish Chaos. Let's search for burn. Epa Warrior, sorry. Yeah. Nate Dog woke up so early. He's this far on he's back. <laughs> it on and okay, grand. so <laughs> So Warlick has the same sample size as we have right now. It's two matches, and it was 50-50. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess if we average it out, 75? 75%. 75%. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. That yes. sounds about right. So do we have more duelists really using Quish right now, aside from NB, Wavement, and Pike? Is there anybody else that you know um, about? I know Moxie's has uh, toyed the deck every once in a while. I'm not sure how But does he bring it to tournaments, or is he just it? using it behind the scenes? Um, I think he may have brought it to a tournament. Okay. I just know he talks really highly about the deck. Um, Scrub for life. I've been picking up and playing the deck a good bit. All right. Um, he's he's pretty big believer on on the deck. Um, who else is there? Um, that's all I can think about top of my head. Well, it's about time we add some more people to that. Pui. Pui. We has been quishing before she was running. Really? Okay. I did not know that. Well, I guess I it's know she also was on that. Um... The Nano, I guess, also is part of it, right? He played it, and then there's also who was who was it again? Who had that relinquished burn deck? Was that Yomba Man? Uh, I know what you're talking about. I don't remember the duelist that had that. Um. Um, HMVB says going for Pike here, even though I'd love to see you return and win something again. I think it's going to be Nate. I'm just saying, as if we're, if we're just going off a of winner's side versus loser side, he has the better chances. Like, I like Pike, he's good. He whooped me in War League. Jace, Jace was the relinquished burn player, right? Right, but to be fair, he whooped everybody in War League, so don't feel bad. I don't. Um, it was very interesting. I never played against uh, Relinquish on Cat, so that was an interesting experience. I'll tell you what. Any interesting interactions? Because to me, it feels almost like Cat should be favored there, right? Um, I think it was just a sp just like spies and shoots. Okay. <laughs> well, that does it. <laughs> Turns out shoot is a pretty good card. Shaggy Powers, shout out Shaggy. Let's go, Nate Dog. UI forever, baby. And it's starting. Let's go. Oh, I'm joining. I'm joining. I'm joining. I'm joining. I assume Shaggy also dabbled in the deck because I feel like whenever there's a spicy deck anywhere, Shaggy had his hands in it somewhere. <laughs> Dan's a Lug, shout out, says, Let's go, Nate. Legend Fox, CM and Spectator, shout out. Shout out Fox. 
<laughs> shout out. Why are we just offering shout outs to anybody? Hey, Fox deserves it. He he's busted his uh his butt, you know. He busts his butt every every obelisk, making sure it runs smoothly. Mike Creek T set pass. Pot start always decent. You love to see it. Unless you're Nate Dog, in which case you hate it. Yeah, then it's like the worst thing ever. And he's just setting everything. Oh again. my goodness. I feel like we've seen that at least three times today where he just sets his entire back row <laughs> and nothing else. Does he even yeah, play BKs? Do Have we seen a BK for him today? Or is he just on the Sasakis in place of BKs. The only time I saw him have a BK is when he snatched it. <laughs> Shout out Pot of Greed from Thrall. Let's just, just shout shout out everything. Let's shout out <laughs> JDZ for not being on stream today. Let's shout out JDZ. <sighs> shout out Dust Shoot. Shout out Windblast. Shout, shout out, out to Windblast for being a oh worse version of Rageki God. Break. Serp in hand as well is crazy. Oh, probably the only monster then, right? No, he just doesn't want it to get shoveled away. Oh, BLS. Yes. Shoot. Mirror, now, what knock, if Nate has board. another shoot and this Serp comes to hand and just gets shooted straight away? <laughs> Let's see it. Come on, another one. No. It, SJC champ Kyle Lopez says, Nate for the win. Let's go. So it seems like the chat wants Nate Dog to win, which makes me want Pike Freak to win. It's it's the UI squadron. They they're oh, rolling deep right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kyle Lopez, Crash Bolt, also UI. UI uh, is Lug, UI. And of course Shaggy. UI. Yeah, of course. And a lot of UI. Game time, game time Michigan. Shout out to myself for being awesome. <laughs> Great shout out. Shout out, DJ. Let's Fowler, shout out, shouting out. That shit is dope. Appreciate it. We're going to see the spies get flipped. And we're going to set a bunch here and dodge maybe a second. <laughs> a second shoot. So this looks great for Pike Creek. Again, card advantage is completely on your side. A lot of it is MT, yep. just probably relinquished again. Actually, no, he hasn't searched for it at least. He might have drawn into it. Well, we know that it's shoot, mirror, knock, sork. In the circulation here. And there's a serpent. In the serp. So shoot, mirror, knock, serp. Stream yeah, okay, is a have... bit off focus. Can't see life points or player chat. Okay, let me fix that. Um, oh, that's because I haven't changed to the image. View. Oh. Should be fixed. There we go. Okay, we're soloming the grace. Makes sense. We know about serpent. Get yeah, that out too, of here. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. So you're getting kind of close to having to suck with this because now a ring on a Chaos Sorcerer does end the game. Yeah. So I assume he doesn't have Saku. Deco. Oh, we, we got so, Train. Well, he can't risk the knock right now, so he's just running it in. Yeah, but, well, we know that he has knock here as well. But this doc, uh, this deco doesn't do much because as soon as a manju gets drawn, it can search and then crash for plus. That's why manju is so good, man. It just hits the field, it gets you something, and then it just still is a monster. It's a it bad is. monster, but it's it's a monster. <laughs> well, yeah, that's all you need, right? It's already done its job. It's already done its thing, and then you get a bonus. The bonus is the body. Yeah, the bonus is that there is a slim chance you can plus. With a hit. Yeah. Or just push for damage. Yeah. You know, you can do okay. that... Um, Am I stuck again or is DNA? he thinking on the attack? He's thinking on the attack. Okay, he left oh. and now he's yeah, back. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, as I said, Dueling Book has been acting up all day. It's kind of weird. Garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute garbage <laughs> site. Why are we Garb using this? <laughs> I should have told these duelists to just remote duel instead. Yeah. The other day, <laughs> so we're building up kind of a German gold community, and the other day, a Spanish community contacted us and they wanted to play on Edo Pro, and I was I didn't even know that that was a thing that people actually played gold on Edo Pro. 
Yeah, I, I remember when I first started. I, I that's where I, I first started because I was really intimidated by the manual play. But um, I think dueling book is still better. I just like that. You... I might be spreading rumors here, but I think that Edo Pro doesn't even have prior. And since it's like a automatic thing, it just like the game just proceeds without prior being a thing. So it's not really gold if you're playing it there. But that's only if that's actually right. the case. I'm I'm not hundred percent on that. So I don't remember that's the I don't remember if that's the thing or not. But on the other hand, I think having a tournament where you don't have prior would be really interesting. Because suddenly Chaos Sorks are much worse, right? And bottomless is just ruling everything. Right, and I just lost connection. You? Oh, somebody. Yeah, I did. Okay. Let me get okay. back in here. We had a mirror force on a single Earth spy, and now Nate Dog is still struggling. But Pike Creek again. <laughs> he had the pot. He had charity. He had serpent. What else do you want? Drawn like an animal. Maybe he can. Maybe he does have a, a good chance of winning this if he if he gets these draws. This is crazy. Team Od Anthony says Grump. Thanks for the compliments earlier. Shout out to other decorated top online players like Lucas, Moxies, AJT, etc. Yeah. GGP stat padding is fake. Don't at me. So who are you calling out here? Like who's stat padding their their records with GGPs? You gotta name names. You can't just say that without following up. Don't add him. Okay. Um, I did. <laughs> but no, yeah. Shout out to Alvarado. For sure. Can't wait to see him play in the Goat Grinder. Please don't. <laughs> Shaggy says, Edo Pro used to not have prior and rulings were super bad, but I believe they fixed that a few years ago. I started there also... I didn't know how rules work. Oh, Same here. But that's great. If it's fixed now, then that's actually great. I think I think having an automatic version of this makes it much easier as a barrier of entry for new players. I I try to get some friends into this as well, and they just don't even want to learn how to use Dueling Book. Like that's Yeah, I tried, not something they I try to, to get do. friends on Dueling Book. It's for a lot of them they just feel very intimidated. It's very so overwhelming when you first load in. So yeah. if that stuff is fixed now on Edo Pro, like why are we playing over there? I think it's the argument that Edo Pro is more so like a game and Dueling Book is more so a simulator of tabletop play. Okay, how is Edo Pro a game? Because it's uh, it's automatic re uh it Okay. How do I describe this? It, the fact that it's automatic with how everything works. Okay, but as long as everything is still unlocked straight away, you don't have to do stuff to actually play the cards. I don't see the problem. Anyway, that's probably not the right discussion to have here. Probably not in public, at least. But uh, it's kind of interesting. Right. Maybe maybe that's the way to do it in the future. And like maybe just put some feelers out. Have one tournament over there. I don't know. Well, I know. Um... So. Another thing, we'll, yeah, we'll talk about this later, but yeah. Um, this Anthony. Con this confirms Alvarado. that Bazoo has been in the main deck, so it's not about having banishes after Noxagon. It's just, just playing it because it's good. So yeah, yeah, just likes it. Anthony Alvarado says, AJT, Pateo, Lucas, stat padding. Good call out. I appreciate it. <laughs> Auto Sims also reveal info you don't want to, like Solemn with the wait timer as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that, that sucks. I was going to say that um, YGO Omega, if you all know that one, that's another kind of downloadable Yu-Gi-Oh! program similar to Edo Pro. Hmm? It does have a manual mode. Yeah, but then it doesn't really matter. If we have manual mode, then we can do that on Dual Link Book. The exactly. But it's more be... so like if to have an automatic one that doesn't give away info. That would be the best thing. Yeah. Swork banished the bazoo, and then 
Are we swinging for lethal? Does it go through? You have your another return. He's used it twice just to survive. Nice try. Yeah, but Nate Dog is he's living on a prayer. There's nothing happening. <laughs> There's one less one more card for him. He has he gets to draw one and look at all of this. Pike Rick has three monsters on the field, four cards in hand, one set. What do you do? Maybe uh snatch. But snatch doesn't Hard do anything. Snatch. I mean, yeah, it solves the board for now, but it doesn't put any pressure. And honestly, Pike Freak is going to draw into anything. Ooh. Ooh. Am I behind again? Nope. We're going to go into game two. Need dog use Breaker Pop to... Okay, so I am behind again. And it just doesn't update in time. I love it. Dueling book has been incredible. Has been incredibly consistent. <laughs> Consistently bad. <laughs> incredibly consistent at the the bare minimum of usability. <laughs> 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 setting instead of setting the standard, Dueling book opts to set the bare minimum of what we as duelists are willing to tolerate. Yeah. <laughs> it's a program. <laughs> <laughs> it's not wrong. You can play Edison on Dueling Nexus site. Would be cool if we had Goat too. Oh yeah, Dueling Nexus. I totally forgot about that website. What is that? It's kind of like a Edo Pro, kind of. Okay. It, except it's on browser. Hmm. You don't have to install it or anything like that. It just it's just on the browser. And that has a, a lobby system, like a ranked lobby system as well. So I'm actually going to change who I'm rooting for right now. I now want Nate Dog to win because if Pike Freak wins, then probably not able to stay until the very end. So out of very well, selfish reasons, I just want Nate Dog to reverse sweep this right now. <laughs> If you are unable to, I can also see about yeah. picking up the stream from here as well. We still have time. Yeah. Like at least half an hour, probably a bit more. But once that is done, I have to get going. All right. Nate Dog is starting. What a surprise. And does he have Drop Trin? Turn. Does he have Trin? He does have Trin. We got one. Charity is usually the last one to use in hand, so unless he's drawn into more, he doesn't have another. We're tossing Deco and Sangen. There's the duo. Decent. I'll take it. I think all of us have PTSD of the one time that we've used duo when our opponent had double NA in hand. <laughs> Sork. Kaiku and Sork. So that probably tells us that there's no light in Pike Creek's hand because he would have pitched that. Correct. And then we just set a bunch of stuff. We have shoot and please tell us what you see. That is a Zombira. Graceful, Graceful Saku, Saku Breaker. Breaker. Not bad, actually. That Breaker could just plus here. It's a ring. So now we have Graceful and Saku. I think you probably just want to set Saku for now. No. He wants to go. Go. Into it. Yeah, just. Trying to get whatever you can here. Always feels bad when your opponent can grace right after you shoot it because you're losing almost all of your info. 
Yeah, especially if he discards his Saku, that pretty, that's yeah. pretty much all unknown. TD and Upstart, TD so he's upstart. keeping the Saku. Duo. So what would uh -oh. he have kept? Oh, you've already seen it? Is it Duo? Yeah, he kept the Duo. Okay, I, I don't see that yet, but... <laughs> Apparently, Pike Nate Creek has Dog. Duo and Saku. What did Nate Dog discard for it? Uh, ring and BLS. No, not Ring. Um, BLS and Dustinado, my bad. BLS is Oh, Nate Dog flips Summon the Spy. Grab uh, Summon the Spy from deck. Both in attack and pot. Got Rhoda. I mean, you know it's Saku, so you could just go balls to the wall. You can just set everything. Yeah, there's no punish. That's Torrent or Miracles. Yeah. So this BK has to get saku here. Yeah. Yep. And then you go for two four with the spies. Spies are just so good, man. It's one of the best aggro cards you can be you can be playing. Yeah. Frank Frank looking in graves. Checking what's going on, and here comes the BLS off the top rope. Oh my goodness. No negate, asking for Pryo. Hmm. So what is the punish for not taking Pryo? I guess it's just that you can't attack right we don't know what this is i don't think we've seen bottomless from nate so that's not going to happen yeah Zago, this top deck is insane <laughs> that's good for you crazy sometimes it just hits when you don't want it to that's no prior. prior. Hey. What if Nate Dog is just sitting on that ring? Okay, he isn't. Mirror Force. Okay, so any normal summon does it. Any normal summon sends us to game three. Is your graveyard? Does he have chaos? Yeah, he does. <laughs> you got chaos. I got chaos. I got smaller chaos, but it's better than yours anyway. Yeah, at least my chaos is is up. Exactly. Okay, so have we seen anything interesting now? Did Pike Free keep anything in? I don't think we've seen stuff. I don't think we've seen Phoenixes or whatever. It's just same old, same old. Right. We've seen some I don't Byra, think, uh, make some sense. There's not too much exciting differences here. There's an upstart for your trouble. Game 1000. Cool. Great. I do not see that. <laughs> and now I do. Ah, pretty cool. Got an upstart. Upstart is... Now what's he doing? A good card, but you kind of never want to see it. It's... It's just the, just the best placeholder you can yep. be playing. <laughs> I guess you could be playing Simochi Burn, and then it just goes crazy. Oh, if it was a three, dude, some Simochis. Yeah. There's that um. There's that the card permanent is. trap that Ooh. makes you see your opponent's hand, and then they gain. A thousand yes. every standby phase, and with Simochi, you just burn them. That card, it that Simochi, man. Simochi is fun. I've seen some people cited in burn just to stop walks from doing stuff. Yeah, cancel out the walks. This Whirly punish is going to go crazy, but there's Saku yep. for you. It's not even that big of a punish because like, you're still just trading one for one. 
but that Sangan is going to stick around. And it's chilling. I am not seeing what's happening again. I love it. Nick Dog has four set. <laughs> he has none for me. Okay, I'll refresh again. Uh, it's just getting worse over time. Oh, heavy. Pike Creek, heavy. Oh, best, that is best harsh. Best burn spell in the game. <laughs> So a couple of weeks back in the Patreons, I played one of most my clap variants with a blowback dragon in it, and mm -hmm. even abyss soldier stuff. And I had the idea there of running a true nade on top just to be able to recycle prima and call, and um, and have people pay more for solemn, <laughs> because most of the time heavy is just the four thousand against warrior, right? And true nade kind of does the same, right? True Nate's great. It it uh it puts fear in the opponent, the, the true nade. Yeah. Makes them really unsure on if it's safe to solemn or not, or so how this, much it matters. This set is most likely a Thunder Dragon. Um what is Pike yeah. searching? Moth. Moth? Did you see it or yeah. did you guess it? He had it. He got it. <sighs> Disgusting. <laughs> Let's set some more here for Nate Dog. Set the whole hand. So, what do you think he said? Mm. It could just could be, be a spy, spy or deco again. Something like BK, I feel he would have just summoned and tried to punch over the Thunder Dragon. Game time says, gotta head out. Thanks for hosting an awesome stream, Grump and BT. Shout out. Wes Flower. Wes Fowler. Does Dancing Fairy Creature Swap level limit be to Mochi GG? <laughs> what does oh. Dancing Fairy do? I think it gives HP if it's in defense, something like that. I remember that card like from back in the day, it was. It wasn't one of those DS games. I think it was Nightmare Troubadour, which I played back in the day. Mm. It was one of the best early game cards in there because you could get it early and its stat line is actually decent. It's like 1700 attack. In terms of swift BLS, uh oh. I, this is this is bad. I, I just can't follow the game at all because this doesn't. I just don't see the BLS. I don't see anything that's going on. Maybe. We should switch the stream already because this is kind of pointless. I'm just not seeing it. I'm refreshing again right now. Okay, BLS got dealt with. Did it get solemned? Yes, it got solemned. Okay. Okay, so Pike Creek has one TD on field, one in hand, and one moth. That is what we know. We don't know anything else. This is probably that Pike Creek set one. There's the spy. Calling another one. And now we're tributing for Demog. I would go crazy. Oh, Demok would definitely get you out of this. Oh, here's Minecon. Minecon, that is that is great because that is most likely the move. Yeah. I don't think we've seen Minecon so far, so Pike Creek might not have even anticipated this. It's Shook. a Sook! Ah, great oh, bait. Oh my great bait. goodness. He, he does get to recycle the spy, but getting to getting to protect your moth that way is amazing. That's exactly what you want. I'm kind of surprised he did that because... I don't think you would expect Nate Dog to side in mind cons against you. You don't have that many flips. Well, I think it's also just a fear of knock too, because we, Nate Dog hasn't done a knock yet. Yeah. Just remind you. True. Yeah, 
And now I'm stuck in the end phase again. And DB hates you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, relinquish. We know about relinquished, moth, sook, and a thunder dragon in hand, and a thunder dragon on the field. So there's only one card in hand that we're missing, and this set spell or trap that Pike Freak has behind it. Mm -hmm. Nate Dog with two spies on the field. I think there's a third in deck, so it can resolve again. But Pike Freak is thinking. Honestly, he doesn't have to do anything. He can just wait for a ring and a chaos monster and just wait. His position is great. Nate can't actually make any progress right now and he's low on HP. So does anything happen for you, or is he still thinking? He's still thinking. Great. He's still thinking. So what do you Pass. think? What? He's passing? Okay. Yeah. Because there's not that much that you can think about. Most of his hand is known anyway. Right. He does, he does flip the spy manually. That's interesting, because this spy is just fodder for Manju now. Maybe as a Zabok. Zabok drop would be pretty good. We haven't seen a Zabor drop yet, have we? True. Maybe he doesn't even play it. It kind of makes sense with the Bazoos because Bazoo kind of takes its place, but also kind of doesn't. I yeah, guess with the setup that Nate Dog has, like with the Sorcerer as well as Bazoo, it kind of feels like he's just trying to make Return more, um, more reliable, oh. more consistent. By adding more ways to banish. And I think that's also the way that Dingo Sig won his world, world title. By having double return and pursue in the main deck. Because okay, mine another can. One, another one. Now this one has to be more fright. If this is Zook again. It's a spy. It's oh not what you want. God. It is not what you want. But Pike Free <laughs> can afford to do this. Because he doesn't yeah, have to do anything. Super ahead. Wow. That has to sting. That has to sting. That is brutal. Ugh. Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness, man. Yeah, Pykrik is just waiting for his lethal push right now. He has no pressure to do anything. You can't make me do nothing. <laughs> he is just waiting. This is... This is dangerous. Okay, so we're thinking in the main phase. And... Nate Dog keeps checking the graves. So at least there's no dark for Pike Freak yet, but he can get that by tributing over the spy with the DD if he wants to. But there's no pressure to do that. He can just wait. He can just let Nate Dog do the work for him. Ring is live on both sides. It's kind of already a dead card for Nate Dog. But it's very important for Pike Freak to find it. This is also one of those spots where Seasire would just end the game. If we can <laughs> go back to that. You know. Maybe maybe Seasire it, should be a side deck card against Return. If you want to whenever, dedicate side deck, deck space to Return <laughs> at all. Okay. We're setting this spy. Set this spy. Now, do Does you think, Nate Dog let it go? Do you think he's going to just flip it up again? Or do you think he's just waiting again? So he doesn't offer up an attack position spy? Hmm... Makes you vulnerable to knocks, but the other one makes you vulnerable to attacks. You're going to ring it. Ooh. Yeah, it's kind of the last chance that you have to use ring at all, right? Yeah, use it or lose it for sure. And I would really wish that we could see that. 
Ähm Don't make me refresh again. Okay, I will. Ähm There's Here the sword. The sword. Does this mean that we have ring? No solemn prio. Okay, we're prying away. Does he have an out for the other spy on the field? Doesn't look like it. So we're probably just waiting a turn and then trying to push for lethal next turn. Oh, there's wind blasts. What does he target? Uh, targeting spy. Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Trying to do a big lethal push here. See if we can do it. And he does. It connects. Going on to the bracket reset. Okay. I think that is the perfect time to have you host the stream now because I have to go in 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, so I'll close it up for now, and we will be right back. Yep, yep. Okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, every, du every, every duelist. Let's hope that dueling book doesn't hate you as much as me today. It was destroying you. It was absolutely destroying you. It still is. So now we have the bracket reset. Whoever wins this goes to Worlds. Yeah. Nate Dog on return. Pike Freak on his squish. It is time. Grand freaking finals, dude. <laughs> Grand freaking finals. Bracket reset. Let's get it. <coughs> Sorry, I thought I muted myself. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm way too loud. I can turn myself down. Okay. There we go. Are they waiting for us to confirm they can play, or what are we waiting on? Uh, one minute for a toilet break. From Pike Freak. Oh, kind of worked out perfectly. I will give it to them. Who's going to be the co- you is called Grumple, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> I don't think we have another... I don't think we have another co-commentator, unless somebody else wants to hop on. No, I'll, I'll make it work. It's I'll only going it to be work. one match anyway. Yeah. I, I believe in you. You can do it. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, it's going to be... A, it's going to be a tough ride, but we're going to make it happen. Um... So yeah, now that it doesn't actually matter who's winning for my leaving, because I have to leave anyway, uh, I'm starting to root for Pike Creek again. Really? I'm just, just a, how do you call that? Like a flag in the wind, something like that. <laughs> What's the actual expression? Help me out here. Um, flag in the wind. I, I think you're on the money. Okay. We're going to start with a duo, though, from Nate Dog. so here we go. Landing on a three, hit in the center. Hits a Thunder Dragon. That's pretty harsh. That's okay ish It's not what you want, but also not something you hate. Yeah, you well, you'd prefer to not be duoed in the first place, but I guess beggars can't be choosers here. We also pitched a Moth. Moth Toss is interesting because he has the light already. Mm. I guess it just means he doesn't have good spells to recycle right now. Right. We're going straight into the Manju into push combo. Knock. 
Knock the set. It's, it's interesting Deco. that he keeps the knocks in. Or maybe he only has it now. Oh, yeah, right. It's game one. It's game one. Of course yeah. he has it now. He has them. And we're hitting in with Manju. Lots of lights. And it's another fairy. So go figure. Now, after a duo and this Manju push, Night Dog is already struggling for HP a bit. There are definitely worlds where something like a BLS ring just ends him in the next turn. Yeah, he's got to get these considerations. And then again, at the same time, Pike Freak still has to dump all dark. He only's got light, only got lights in the grave. Yep. That is true. You're going to try, but I guess this is your opportunity to drop a dark if you have it. There's the push. Hey, talk. Thinking. Let's go. It's just another bit of chip damage. But Pike Creek has invested resources on this. The Rinkwitch is now out, but Chaos is active. What can we see? This is looking good for Pike Creek again. Seriously good. Main dog searching Rota for Rota. Searching for Sasuke. That's what we've seen all, yep. all day. I think he even had the double Sasuke. Yep, this is the second the Sasuke. Here. Yeah, so the ratios here are definitely different than they usually are for a return. Sets another. Gonna snatch the Sasuke. Let's it go. Mirror Force. Nate Dog you is. You don't really want to up. use Mirror Force on a single monster, especially if it's your own, but you don't really have a choice. Yeah, I mean, Nate Dog is up here. He. He could, well, maybe uh, in terms of cards, but he is quite behind an LP. That's true. But at the same time, too, Nate Dog is. This needs. He doesn't need too much from this position. Like, if he gets like a normal summon in return, he could be on his way to. That is good, though. Sealing the TD deal. into charity. Yeah, but that's. He only got one TD off that draw. It's still uh, good, though. It's still really good. Snatch getting the nice two for one. What's up, Wave Mint? Wave Mint, probably the first player putting Quish on the map. So, yes. Having him in here for the Obelisk final, including Quish, pretty good. I agree. I'm gonna flip spy. Now are we going to attack and just trying to punch in or are we trying to summon a defense just for safety? I think it makes sense to try to equalize life here. At least get closer. There shouldn't be big punishes here. Manju just hits over the one anyway. I guess BLS could be a punish, but we don't know what the back row is. Yep, good hits all around. On the set as well, it's not a deco because those are already completely out. It might be a third spy or even a Sengen. Yeah. It could it could very well be those two. And I don't think Nate Dog is does moth, right? I don't think so. At least not in game one. Maybe yeah. there are ideas on the side where you side out your return package and go into moth and just be more good stuff oriented. Right. But also, since we haven't seen any Zaborgs in this list, I think Mine Cons become a lot stronger against Nate Dog than they usually are against Return. 
Because the problem when using Minecon against the Borg decks is just that you give the monster back and then they drop to the Borg anyway and it doesn't really matter. Here that's probably not a problem. So there could be ways where you just side out your Nox and replace them with Minecon so you don't give Night Dog his banishes. Especially since you have spies as well, so you can make use of any set here. Deku just drawing one or spy. Comes a Kaiku. Do you banish? That's an interesting question. No. No banish. Makes some sense. Since Kaiku blocks the Chaos Summon anyway, and you don't want to give your opponent the option to return for Sasuke so it can uh, knock over Kaiku. Right. I think that's probably the reasoning. Oh, there is a Borg. There he is. There is a Borg. Okay, I was lying. Any tribute over the Sangan? This is super duper plus. But I, I don't think we've seen it all day. That's. I haven't seen it at all. That is a good spot to show. <laughs> Grabbing the warrior lady. And if you have return, you can just have lethal. Does he have return though? We don't know. Okay, now Pykrick is thinking. Is he trying to move for us now or is he trying to wait? Honestly, I don't think there's a reason to wait because there's no lethal with the return. return. Do you have yeah. It's also so interesting that return decks actually become stronger once there's a solemn meta because the decos, like if you get a deco banished and then you call off the, all of them back with return, that's already lethal after solemn. Yeah, just one solemn. Yeah. That's plus, plus, know. plus for Nate. We're letting it go. Hit for 24. Okay. Sadly, I 12. have to go now. I. Would have liked to at least finish the game, but I have to leave. It's all I'll good, Grumple. Hands, we'll leave you in the hands of Tooth. Appreciate it. I'll Shout out, everybody. To out. Everybody give a big thank you to Grumple for streaming today. Shout out. Okay. I will leave you. Peace I'll out, bro. Time. I'll see you another time, man. What a nice guy, that Grumple. Pike Freak is thinking on the play, main phase one. What's he thinking? Big think, says Pike Freak. Pike Freak. It, Pike Think. And Dog saying, okay. Okay. Plus, plus, plus for Nate. And that's a Borg play was potent and much needed. There it is. Okay, now we got some action here. Chaos Sorcerer banishing Thunder Dragon, banishing Tsukiyomi. No solemn Pryo from Nate Dog. What is Pike Freak thinking here? He's saying yes on Pryo. Going to banish as a Borg. Nate ready to activate that ring he has face down. So Pike Freak opting to banish as a Borg. Maybe not fearing return. Maybe he has a, uh, a card prepared for a possible return. 
There's one blast. Two blast popping the stale set. Or not popping, but you know, bouncing the stale set. And here comes BLS. Uh oh. That's not good. No solemn prio. No prio. Just trying to go for game here. And that is game. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a play. No remorse, all action. Right, Free said, you know what? If you got it, you got it. Let's do this. No fear. Into game two, Nate Dog has concluded sighting. Dog going first. Normal summon the Sangan. Set. 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 That pass. Wavement says, that's how needed to play, though, down that many cards. That's true. 100% true. You kind of have to just risk it. Because if you don't, you may not get an opportunity again. Crashing the sand gans. Nate Dog gets to search first. Lucky him. Adding a DD Warrior Lady. And Pike Freak is going to add... What? It's gonna add what? Catch the Sangans is not something you see often. Yeah, usually people just try to get their plus. You know, people would rather wait out for something like uh some way to take care of like a chaos monster or something like that. But sometimes just crashing is totally fine. Here comes a duo. Which makes a lot more sense on the sand game play there to crash if you just have the duo. We're going to solemn it. Set, set, pass. There's a DD warrior lady. Trusty, a trusty lady. And here comes Sakuretsu armor. Wailing in on that warrior lady. We're going to set one and pass. Nate Dog's building up a fortress back here. Fort Knox. Old Priya. Okay. And in end phase, Destinado. Hit the Solemn. How do you get the okay and fur it for the think? Um. That is uh, through the style bot plugin that I use to customize a dueling book like that. Imanji is going to search for the relinquish and we're going to swing for 1400. It connects. Uh oh. Nate Dog is getting low. Where is Nate Dog holding the solemn to deal? Well, one was the warrior lady and the other one is unknown. Actually, no, it was the fresh set. It, I think it was the solemn, right? I think he, I think it was a solemn. Vanishing a light and dark. BLS. Bazoo. Is trying to, is, does he have the return? Is this just a lethal line right here?
46. 16. Flip the return. We're going to game three. The whiffed OTK. Actually, I don't know if that was OTK. Uh, no, well, I mean, Pike Freak lost a thousand. <laughs> that was a ton of damage. Massive, massive damage right there. Frank Freak grabbing the two Thunder Dragons. There's one. There's two. Just for you. It was over 8K. I didn't do the math. Freak, ding ding. I'm gonna set, set, pass. A humble T set. You thought going to main phase one? No shoot. No shoot. We're gonna mine con the set. Hopefully something nice. Maybe a spy. Hey dog thinking. After that mine con. Uh oh. Thinking on flipping it, so. Let's see here. What is Nate Dog up to here? What is the game plan? I'm gonna set, set, and pass the set back. I wonder what it is. Well, I mean, obviously he's on something incredible. This is Zombira. Oh, man. Unforge. see here what is pike freak thinking he's a he loves to think he's a big thinker you got albert einstein you got nikola tesla and you got pike freak as great thinkers here comes an mst it's the solemn uh-oh Oh, wow, we're just going all out. Back to Banished set. What is the set? Spy. Swing for 16. Uh-oh. Think Dog draws for turn. I'm not trying to swing this around here. It's a Sasuke. It's Pike Rake. Let this happen.
He does. Takes 200 damage. Since we set and pass. Plank three. Standby phase. All good to go. We're thinking in main phase one. What's the game plan? Your MST's gone. And you didn't use a dust tornado in end phase. So gonna have to try to maneuver around whatever Nate Dog has back here. Felix going to use effect to banish. And almost summon a Kaiku. Felix going to defense position. Kaiku going to slam in. There's no targets to banish here. I mean, we're going to set one pass. Think we does have lethal on board if he's willing to take the risk there's a graceful charity oh my goodness uh three feels good pitching serp feels good pitching td feels good there's pot of greed uh-oh uh-oh this is uh scary heavy oh my goodness Found the heavy. Nate Dog has to think on this. Wow. And Nate Dog admits defeat. There's ring and knock. Oh wow. And there is your champion. Pike Freak. Coming out here. And going off going off oh my goodness congratulations to pike freak damn i never ever thought i'd get that invite today thanks man it's always an honor to play you what a nice guy that pike freak what a nice guy relinquish going to worlds waveman feel good Congratulations to Pike Freak. I know Team Bone's going crazy right now. Team Bone's going crazy. Well played by Nate Dog. So close. Nate Dog is so close. So freaking close to getting an invite. I know he's going to get it, though. I know for a fact he's going to get it. Second relinquish in Worlds this month. Lol. That's dope. That is dope. Congratulations. Thank you to everybody for watching. Uh, I, I know there was been there was some technical difficulties early uh, earlier. So I'm glad I, I was around. <laughs> I'm usually never up this early. I'm usually uh, I usually go to bed at a good time like a good boy, but you know. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes, you know, you take a nap and then it's all over. So I'm just glad I'm here. And I was able to catch the stream and be around to help out. Shout out to everybody for watching. Thank you all for staying tuned. And before I leave, real quick, GGI, go Grinder Invitational this Saturday. If you don't have an invite today, there's going to be two events. These are kind of like the last chance qualifiers for GGI. So if you want to get an, an invite into GGI to get a world's invite, if you win that, play the Fridays today. And uh, yeah, peace out, y'all.